my old friends, the two Faithins. It's been a while. How have you both been lately? Not too bad, thanks to you. Of course, things would be even better if you could get us the business we need. Oh, dear. Well, when you say it like that, I'm not quite sure how to put the next part. Seems you don't have any good news for us today. Please, hear me out. It's completely out of my hands. The city has recently beefed up security measures for the election. Not just on the main roads. They've also got people stationed on the hollow exits leading to the outer ring. Although there have always been quite a few outer ring smugglers using the hollows for transport, risks have skyrocketed recently, and most clients have given up on doing business in the city for now. Even if you find someone willing to risk it, those small fry definitely won't have what you're looking for. So you passed up on my valuable commission to do business in the Outer Ring. You're looking for a reliable source of intel, right? Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Shepard. It seems to keep my old clients happy. The less I say, the better. Just take what I'm about to say as me talking to myself. If you want to gather information in the Outer Ring, try to get in with the biker gangs there. Biker gangs? The people of the Outer Ring live far apart, and the transportation of supplies relies heavily on the biker gangs. They're well respected among the residents, and nothing happens there without them knowing about it. It's unfortunate that this option is beyond the scope of my business, so this is all the help I can offer you. <clears throat> <sighs> well, that's all I have to say. I'll let you get back to your business. If you change your mind and want to make some easy money in the near future, feel free to contact me anytime. Thanks. We'll think about it. See ya! We got a useful piece of intel, but it definitely won't make finding Perlman any easier. We have no other choice. The Outer Ring is completely out of our scope of operations. Speaking of which, finding intel on Perlman has been harder and harder in the city lately. Even Fairy hasn't been able to find any useful leads. Wise, don't you think this whole thing is strange? I get what you're saying. The Outer Ring's huge, but for one person to survive there, it would be impossible to stay completely off the grid. Exactly. Perlman's escape caused quite a stir, and public security is looking for him. You'd think there'd be all kinds of intel on him by now. How does a living, breathing person disappear into thin air? I said I give up! You win! <laughs> now that's more like it, old man. If you'd spoken up sooner, we could have saved ourselves the effort. All right, any other challengers? Anyone else? Big Daddy, we got the Spark Stone. Now you can't say it's not the right time for us to join the Torrid Inferno. We, the sons of Caledon, are the strongest. This time I'm gonna swipe while the iron's hot and seize the Overlord's throne. <sighs> it's strike while the iron's hot, you idiot. <laughs> The Overlord's Throne, huh? Caesar, well, my opinion hasn't changed. Since you've earned the right, go test the waters. Huh? Aren't you coming with us? I'm retired. This kind of action-packed stuff should be left to the young'uns. Besides, someone's got to look after the transport business. Caesar! Big Daddy! We found something amazing over there! Oh, it's an airship! This is the first time I've seen one up close! Hey, Caesar, there's a live one over here. It's such a serious accident, this guy's lucky to be alive. I feel like I've seen this face before. It's not just any guy. This is the defendant in that vision case from the city! He's on the public security's most wanted list! So much money! 
Enough to drink nitro fuel like water for the next 30 years! Enough to buy five steel tusks? <sighs> Public security sure is generous. Public security? No! Don't hand me over to public security! Uh, I'm begging you! I, I know who the real mastermind is! I have evidence of their crimes! Evidence! <sighs> to be honest, I'm starting to doubt if Perlman is even still alive. We can still rely on hand for the sacrifice investigation, but the Cunning Hairs' lawsuit won't be on hold like this forever, will it? Master, second assistant, there is an incoming call from Billy. Should I connect the call for you? Speak of the devil. Barry, put the call through. Oh, manager, you're home! I just sent you a message, but you didn't reply. We're both here. What's up, Billy? Manager, I have something really important to tell you, but I'd prefer to do it face-to-face. -face. I'm at the corner behind Bardic Needle. Can you meet me there? Billy, that's not far away. Why don't you just come to the store? Uh, because the vehicle I'm driving won't fit through. Uh, wait. A public security officer is coming over. I gotta talk to them real quick. Hey, so I'm hanging up. I'll be waiting. I'm counting on you. What is Billy talking about? The Cunning Hairs usually park their car in our parking lot, don't they? But since you said so, Wise, you should go meet him. What's with the leaps and bounds truck and this bamboo? No way! I'm pretty happy with my life now. And besides, the boss hasn't paid me one denny of my bonus yet. This truck and the bamboo both belong to the Sons of Caledon, one of the Outer Ring biker gangs. The truck has a new Eridu entry pass, and recently non-residents have had to queue for a long time to get in and out of the city. So I'm helping them transport goods. After all, I used to work for them. So you know the biker gangs? Yeah, I worked with them for a while, before fate brought me to the city. Manager, we can chat about this later. I have something important to tell you. The Sons of Caledon have intel on Pearlman! Oh? What kind of intel do they have specifically? I asked, but that's info they don't give up easily. Manager? The Sons of Caledon know we're looking for Pearlman. They said they can provide exclusive intel on one condition. They want to talk business with Faith and face to face. You mean they're looking for a proxy? They didn't put it like that, but that's my guess. Manager, though we really need Pearlman for the case we're handling, Nicole said we owe you, so you have the final say on who to work with. Anyway. I'll be helping the Sons of Caledon upgrade their Bang Boo and purchase supplies in the city over the next few days, and then I'll head out to meet them. If you want to meet them face to face, you should come with me. What did Billy want to talk about? The Sons of Caledon, one of the Outer Ring biker gangs, has info on Pearlman. But they want to talk business face to face. Wise, what do you think? 
We finally have a lead on Pearlman. There's no way we can pass this up. And Shepard said these people in the Outer Ring are really in the know. Right, but they want you to go to the Outer Ring in person. There are too many unknowns. Billy will be there too. Plus, he's still doing favors for his old boss, so they must get along well. <sighs> All right, I get it. The good thing is that the Outer Ring isn't under New Eridu's jurisdiction, and proxies can operate there unrestricted. So we don't have to worry about anyone finding out that we're Bathan. Wise, you should spend the next couple of days preparing for the trip and taking care of any loose ends. Is on forever. What do you think, manager? The outer ring scenery is pretty nice, right? It's also super fun to drive here. But this road is too close to a hollow, and there are so many other hollows around. <laughs> There's nothing we can do about it. The outer ring lacks ether technology, making it hard to eliminate hollows. They can't even mine ether resources. Hey, you see that big guy over there? That machinery. Is it an oil pump? Oh, you're good! This area is called the Old Oil Field. The residents here still rely on petroleum for their livelihoods. Wait, wait, wait! What's up with that truck? Wait a minute, a minute, we're gonna crash! Billy, turn right! Drive into the hollow! Oh my, oh my. Interesting. They actually drove into the hollow. And here I thought I'd get to see some explosive carnage. Lord Lucius, I did what you asked. Please spare me. Please spare me. Although the sons of Caledon meeting their end in a hollow only earns a 61 from me, I'll let it slide this time considering your hard work. I hope that in the future, you'll remember this lesson and stop meddling in things that you shouldn't. The second-in-command of the Vanquishers colluding with an Aether Corporation in the city? That's not a joke you should make lightly. is way too hard. Oh, I'm so sorry! I turned too fast and you slammed into me! <sighs> that oil tanker heading straight for us was terrifying. We only made it thanks to your quick thinking. And the vehicle isn't totaled! But we've fallen into a hollow now. What's our next move? Before we fell into the hollow, I sent a distress signal to Belle. She'll find a way to help us from the outside. That's great! It's a relief to hear that. Right. Manager, both of you have a special condition that means you can't be in the hollow for too long, right? Don't worry. There's anti-corruption serum in the truck that I helped buy, as well as some discarded hollow data piles from the city. Billy. That's how we escape from the hollow. There must be a carrot in the Sons of Caledon's Bangboo. Plus, the new data from the data piles. Oh, that's right! You're a proxy! You can calculate a path out of the hollow! All right, let's 
Let's get to work installing the data piles. Let's go, manager. I've got the data piles. Okay, installing three should be enough. We've got ethereals. Must have been drawn in by the data piles. Don't worry, manager. I'll handle them. the car and get out of here. You can do it, manager! We're almost there! I'm really not built for this level of activity. I've heard so much about. <laughs> Come on, brother. You've gone a bit rusty. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's
do it. Show me what you got, bro. No, help me. Oh, you really must be feeling confident today. Nah, it's just that I can't get a reimbursement on anything over ten. Let's clear him out. This one's a real crowd pleaser. already. Don't worry, big sis. I made out of tough enough stuff to hold out. <laughs> Brother, you have nowhere to run, but you've still got a mouth on you. Lighter, you just don't know me well enough. My body is made out of enhanced materials now. Forget about ethereals. Even Nicole wouldn't dare hit me barehanded. <sighs> Oh, so you mean you're literally made out of tough materials. So, big sis, lighter, how did you end up here? Oh, I got a strange call earlier from a young girl. She was all panicked and said you fell into this hollow. So it was the deputy manager. Lucy thought it might be a trick, but the intel she gave about you was flawless. And she even laid out a rescue route. Oh, so this is the legendary proxy, huh? Who'd have thought? Thanks. You arrived just in time. <sighs> hey, proxy! What's wrong? Manager! Manager! Stay with me! Quick! We gotta get out of here! some of the blame for this accident as well. <sighs> we, the sons of Caledon, must honor our guests with the finest funeral! Lighter, you will be carrying the coffin. That's a heavy responsibility. <laughs> we'll need to keep the hearse driving steady. Piper! Ooh, got it. I'll make sure it's as smooth as enough. Bernice! <laughs> Of course, you'll be handling the cremation. You got it! Just gotta burn everything to absolute misery! Lucy? L Lucy? <laughs> Can you all stop goofing around? <laughs> Don't be upset. It's not every day we get to have fun with the cremation ceremony. <laughs> We got a little carried away. Welcome to the Outer Ring! May you rise from the ashes! Faithin! Who would have thought you'd both end up here all because of an accident? Must have scared you back then, huh? <laughs> Relax! You two and Billy are thick as thieves, so that makes us friends. Ah, 
guess that's supposed to be a compliment. Time for a formal introduction. We're the Sons of Caledon, a biker gang from the Outer Ring. I'm the current boss, Caesar. Billy should have already told you why we invited you. The Sons of Caledon need a favor from you. As for Pearlman, his airship crashed here in the Outer Ring during landing. He's lucky to be alive, but he's badly injured and hasn't woken up yet. Wait, you mean you have Pearlman? Yeah. Wait, didn't Lucy tell you? Don't worry, we'll make sure he heals up. And once he's awake, we'll hand him over to you. Uh, wait, Caesar, are you stupid? Negotiations haven't even started, and you already handed over such an important bargaining chip? Negotiations? Bargaining chip? Lucy, again with the pettiness. This kind of manipulation and leveraging, uh-uh. That's not very overlordy. Ugh, easy for you to say. I worked my butt off to keep this info under wraps just for today. If we can't strike a deal with Phaethon, where do you expect me to find a reliable proxy for the Tor de Inferno? The Tor de Inferno is our business. I never planned to count on anyone else. Don't worry, proxy. You coming to the Outer Ring is a sign of respect. Even if you don't agree to help us, I won't go back on my word about Pearlman. Caesar, we appreciate your kindness. But as they say, no work, no reward. Bell is right. Actually, we only came today hoping to get a bit of information on Pearlman. We could never have expected what you're offering. Since you've been so honest with us, we'll do everything we can to help you. <laughs> Straight to the point! I like it! Can you relax a little now, Lucy? Thanks, Phaethon. Your willingness to help will be huge for us. So you need a proxy for this Tour de Inferno you mentioned, right? What is it? <laughs> the Tour de Inferno is the biggest event in the old oil field. Only the strongest squads of bikers can compete. It's a test in the hollows to find out who's the best. Caesar, there's no way they'll get it when you put it like that. <sighs> Let me explain. Simply put, the Tour de Inferno is an off-road motorbike race that crosses through a hollow. Only two teams compete, and the rules are simple. The first team to cross the hollow, reach the finish point at Cinderglow Lake, and throw a spark stone into the lake wins. What's the purpose of such a dangerous race? The purpose of the Tour Inferno is to regularly ensure the safety of our oil resources. After all, oil is the lifeblood of the old oil field. Naturally, for us biker gangs, the Tour Inferno also serves another purpose. The winner of the race becomes Overlord of the Old Oil Field Motor League. That's right, Phaethon. The Overlord is recognized as the top dog of the Motor League. The current Overlord's faction is called the Vanquishers, and their boss held the title for years. Oh, I've been itching to challenge him for a while now. So, the Sons of Calidon are all about honor. <laughs> Proxy, the only one who'd give you that kind of answer is this simpleton right here. People are gunning for the Overlord spot for more than just becoming the top dog. We're not some school kids hooked on fighting manga. The future of the oil industry in the old oil field relies on the support of the Motor League, in every sense of the word. And as the leader of the Motor League, the Overlord is in charge of assigning transport routes. That means they hold real, tangible power. For the past six months, the Vanquishers have only given us the worst roots. <sighs> They're definitely messing with us behind our backs. But when I went to confront them, that smug second-in-command Lucius just said, the Overlord isn't in the old oil field right now, and the roots are decided at random. Hmm. Speaking of the Overlord, he hasn't been seen for half a year. Who knows what he's been doing? But Lucy, what are you afraid of? Even if the roots aren't great, 
With our skills, it's nothing we can't handle. Besides, you're just mad because there's nowhere to buy makeup and snacks on these routes. <laughs> Shut up, Caesar! Didn't we agree you wouldn't criticize me in front of guests? Huh. You call that criticism? It's the truth! And you're the one who's always calling me an idiot! You think I don't have any self-respect? <laughs> you ruin one's plans each time you open your mouth and expect me to praise you? Yeah, yeah. Lady Lucy Montefio, I ruined your plans. <laughs> Are you forgetting who's the one who was so excited about meeting the legendary proxies that she couldn't sleep all night? <laughs> Enough, Caesar! I challenge you to a duel! Today's the day for the sons of Caledon to change hands! <laughs> Bring it on! Then we'll see who's scared. Lida! Come here and be the judge! Are they going to be okay? Well, it's fine, Proxy. Don't worry. This is a two or three times a day kind of thing. Yeah, it's no big deal. Just don't get roped into being the referee, or you might end up on the wrong side of both of them. Anyway, Proxies, it's great to have your help with the Tour de Inferno. Let's give it our best shot.
morning. Did you sleep well? You were exhausted yesterday, right? As soon as your head hit the pillow, you were out like a light. Billy, where's Belle? I haven't seen her. Oh, I just took him back to your store. The other manager and Caesar decided that they're gonna move some of the equipment into your car and set up a mobile proxy workshop. You mean moving the HDD equipment out here? Right. The other manager said working in the city would make communication difficult. Plus, smart devices are few and far between in the outer ring, and long-range data transmission could slow us down. Oh, morning, Proxy. You're awake. Billy's right. You'll be more efficient working from here in the outer ring. Don't worry. We'll take care of the power and network connection. Even in the outer ring, you'll be, uh... Walking on thin ice! <laughs> She probably meant like a fish to water. By the way, before the equipment arrives, let me take you to Blazewood and introduce you to the townsfolk. Lucy said you might not be used to roughing it with us, so I got the mayor to prepare a place for you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Uh, it's no problem. After we get back from town, go talk to Lucy and the others. I heard from your sister that you need to collect some hollow data before the race. Lucy and the gang are also preparing for the Torrid Inferno. You should be able to help each other out. Caesar. So this is the proxy from the city? Guess folks from New Eridu start working young, just like us. Caesar, who is this young lady? Young lady? <laughs> you city folks talk funny. I'm Casa, the mayor of Blazewood. The sons of Caledon have taken good care of our town. So if you need anything, just let me know. You can stay in the house behind me tonight. Sorry, it's still got some stuff that hasn't been moved out but I'll get someone to clean it up. Hey, Casa, I notice a lot of people in town making these woven items. 
We don't have a choice. The pipeline to town still isn't fixed. Without a gas station, all we can do is make handicrafts to earn a living. Luckily, we got a big order recently. And with the Tour d'Inferno coming up, the Sunflints are selling like hotcakes. What's a Sunflint? Oh, it's a kind of handicraft woven from straw. During the Tour d'Inferno, almost every house in the old oil field hangs them up. This pattern looks like an upside-down person. Wow, Proxy! You're pretty smart! The upside-down figure is the first overlord of the Motor League. The elders in the Outer Ring also say this design is the face of the god of sun and fire, guiding the hero to ignite Cinder Lake and return safely from the Hollow. Such a unique pattern must have a story behind it, right? Yup! Actually, this pattern represents the legend of the first overlords Tor d'Inferno. Though the old oil field can still produce oil, did you know the core oil field was swallowed up by a hollow decades ago? Wait, isn't oil susceptible to ether corruption? Mm-hmm. After the disaster, etheric matter seeped through the underground facilities and oil pumps, ruining the shallow oil reserves. But luckily, the collapse of the only deep drilling facility formed a unique natural gas vent. The burning gas kept the etheric matter from spreading further down. So the natural gas vent is Cinder Glow Lake. The appearance of Cinder Lake saved everyone's livelihoods in the old oil field. But even with Cinder Lake, we can't rest easy. Natural gas and etheric matter burning together can easily turn into ether crystals building up around the lake. If left unchecked, more and more crystals will build up and eventually block the vent, extinguishing the lake. If that happens, the underground oil will be doomed. There was a time when Cinder Lake nearly went out. In order to save it, a young man and his friends risked their lives to enter the hollow and blast open an ether crystal using a special spark stone. Just like the one in my hand. But the hollow was treacherous and they didn't even have a carrot with them. By the time they reached Cinder Lake, it was almost completely covered with crystals. Out of desperation, the young man rode his bike into the only spot that was still burning in Cinder Lake and managed to ignite it. So, everyone makes sunflints in memory of his sacrifice. <laughs> oh, Proxy. I never said the first overlord died there. It's normal for the proxy to think that way. After all, everyone who went to Cinder Lake with him thought he was dead, but a day later, he miraculously emerged from the hollow alive. Folks say the god of the sun and fire was moved by his bravery, allowing him to be reborn from the flames. Since then, the residents have drawn his face in the image of him diving into Cinder Lake on their sunflints. There's even a line from a folk song that goes, Diving into the fiery sea, the hero returns valiantly. That's a great story. No wonder it's widely told. Uh-huh. Kids in the old oil field grew up hearing that story. They used to play games pretending to be the first overlord in the Tor d'Inferno. Of course, the first overlord did more than that. After he returned, he gathered all the biker gangs in the old oil field and formed the Motor League. He also made the rule that the Tor d'Inferno would be held every few years to prevent a similar crisis at Cinder Lake. Yeah, that's why the Tor d'Inferno continues to this day. It's still a feat only the strongest bikers can accomplish, but for us residents, it's become more of a festival.
Proxy, you made it. Proxy, didn't Caesar say you were just going to meet the mayor? What took you so long? We saw the Sunflints in Blazewood and heard about the legend of the Tord Inferno. <laughs> ah, so that's why Caesar was so pumped up. After all, that's her favorite story. She even said her dream is to become a hero, just like the first Overlord. <laughs> if she really wants to be like the first Overlord, she better forget those childish fairy tales fast. Lucy, you're not a fan of this legend? It's not that I dislike it, but come on, we're all grown-ups here! We should look at things realistically, don't you think? I mean, the Torrid Inferno only happened a few decades ago. How come it's turned into this huge legend? But using an act of God to spread his story far and wide? The first Overlord must have been pretty smart. Lucy, Caesar said this kind of old person talk will give you wrinkles. Nonsense! Don't listen to her lies! I use exfoliating face masks every day. No way I'll get wrinkles. <clears throat> Proxy, you can see it too, right? The Torrid Inferno is less about heroics and more about the first overlord securing control of the old oil field. Speaking of which, yesterday Caesar called you Montefio. Lucy, are you related to the prestigious new Eridu Montefio family? <laughs> prestigious? You're being a bit too generous to new money, aren't you? But yeah, we're family. So you're from the city. What made you give up that life? <sighs> it's because I never wanted that kind of life where everything is already laid out for you. Plus, my dad only cares about profits and business. Exactly! It's different in the Outer Ring, especially in the old oil field. The Motor League is all about freedom and justice. <laughs> That's what they say, but to survive, you can't forget about profits and business. Take the Sons of Caledon, for example. Employees need paychecks, vehicles need maintenance, and we need supplies that the city won't sell us. Which means we need connections and money. Proxy, I wasn't just making it up when I said the Overlord's faction is targeting us. The Sons of Caledon have had better rep than the Vanquishers these past few years. So, of course, they're jealous. But the recent bad roots we've been getting have hurt our income, and recruiting new members has been an issue. So, for the future survival of the Sons of Caledon, we have to take the Overlord's title. You've got everything figured out. <laughs> I knew someone as sharp as Faithen would get it. Brute strength and passion alone won't get you far. Just watch. It won't be long before I beat Caesar and take the sons of Caledon from her. <laughs> Lucy, you wouldn't admit it earlier, but it turns out you lost last night. N no, I didn't lose. It was just a momentary truce. After all, Prepping for the Turd Inferno is what's most important now. I can put becoming the boss on the back burner. Proxy, let's talk business. The other Faithen mentioned this morning that the lack of hollow data in the Outer Ring is affecting your ability to perform in the Hollows. So for now, we'll be going into the Hollows with you to gather data. Oh, I also need your help with something. The vehicles for the Turd Inferno need some modifications. We need to get a hold of the necessary parts. Wise, I'm back. Good job, Belle. Come on, I'll help you set up the HDD. No need. I just tested the voltage and network speed here. The HDD is working fine. Fairy and Eos are pretty excited to be in the Outer Ring. But it's a new environment, so it'll take some getting used to. Let's warm up for the Tord Inferno with the work we've got on hand. All right, Wise. If you're ready, let's get going.
Hmm, which alias? <laughs> Let's take a break. Remember to buckle up. Here, as expected. Let's move! Stick to the plan! Hey, hey! Wise and everyone from the Sons of Caledon, can you hear me? Our mission is to collect hollow data. Wise, you know what to do, right? Got it. Find the safe areas and put enough data piles down. Don't worry, Proxy. Unlike Billy, we won't let the Ethereals chase you around. Can I ask a question? Lighter always calls Billy brother. Is there a reason for that? Oh, that's because every biker gang in the old oil field has champions. Lighter and Billy are our champions. The first overlord established that any gang joining the League must act with honor. Normally, the overlord mediates disputes, but if he's not around or an agreement can't be reached, they settle it with a duel. That's where the champions come in. <laughs> the boss is right. Champions bear the honor or humiliation of the entire gang. We also serve as the leader's bodyguards. However, considering the boss's strength, she really doesn't need protecting. What did Big Daddy say again? Ah, a ruler doesn't need to be the strongest or the smartest. Just someone who can unite the masses. But in the Sons of Caledon, I just so happen to be the best fighter. <laughs> How can you say that? Lighter doesn't have enough to do, and it's all because you can't control your temper and get into fights yourself. <sighs> I even had to find other tasks for him to do. Proxy, to be honest, for the longest time, I thought Lighter was here just to do odd jobs. Well, Lucy sure knows how to get the most out of the money she spent. Master, you have reached the data collection area. Data pile one, Great. initializing. Just up ahead. Steel Tusk is waiting for ya! Now we're talking! Now we're talking! Caesar, let me help out once in a while. Yeah! Oh, girl, stop, Lucy. Awesome! Activation complete. Next installation location has been marked. Lucky it's not too far this time. Cool! Grab that data pile and let's move! Right away, your highness. <laughs> data pile 2 initializing. Still tough to break up! Activation complete. We just need to install one more and it's done. The perfect installation location has been selected for you. That'd be a lot more perfect if it were closer to us. Data Pile 3 initializing. Watch out. More ethereals incoming. Yeah! 
Piper. Ready. Detected near data pile two. Let's go, Bell. Signals detected nearby. Hurry up! There they are! Not a hey. Lighter! Lighter! Do you know those people? Don't think so. But judging by their get-ups, they're in a biker gang too. Cheat it! Steel Tusk is waiting for you! Load up and roll out! Direct it! Let me at him! Come Ashamed of yourselves. Huh. Who we are is none of your business. You say these are yours, but can you prove it? Of course. These data piles come with receipts. All I'll have to do is just compare them with the registration numbers. <laughs> You're that Lucy something something from the city, aren't you? Yeah, we've heard about the loud mouth strategist of the sons of Calmadon. It's clear you certainly know how to talk a big game, but we're not buying it. Look at these piles. There's no number on them at all. Huh? The numbers on the data piles are gone? You see, these data piles were just abandoned in the hollow. Unclaimed equipment. According to the League's rules, it's found as keepers. To think the sons of Caledon would try to snatch our stuff using such a feeble lie. <laughs> That's hilarious. At first I thought you were just small-time crooks, but you've clearly come prepared. S Lucy, what are you talking about? To grind off numbers engraved on a metal surface in such a short time, you'd need a specialized grinder. 
Since they've even gone to the lengths of preparing that kind of equipment, they must have planned for this well in advance. Ah, I see. <laughs> Since Lucy doesn't want me meddling, I'll leave this to you, Lighter. Got it, boss. Looks like it's my time to shine. Listen up. I may not know the reason, but it looks like you're looking for a duel. <laughs> yeah, since we're all bikers, this is the only fair way to solve a conflict. Lyda, they say you haven't lost a single duel since becoming a champion of the Sons of Caledon. It's time to remind you of the humiliation of defeat. <laughs> I don't think you'll be forgetting the Ember Arena anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It was tough going for you for a while, huh? <laughs> Taste of pain must still be fresh in your memory. <laughs> to be straight with you, our champion's from there too, but while you were twiddling your thumbs, he built up a 20-fight winning streak. Wait, it can't be. <laughs> but you're shaking in your boots, Lyda. That's right. You know just who we're talking about. Uh, sorry, what, what's his name again? You smug jerk! Let's me, Balam! You ended my 21 streak! You cocky bastard! Just because you're handsome, skilled, happier, and handsome! You think you can just forget my name? Wait, did he just say you're handsome twice? Balam, huh? That's cool. I'll remember you. <laughs> Don't get me that crap! You've already said that three times! Uh, Enough talking. I'll be things today. Right here, right now! Lighter, it sounds like you're tougher than that. But all that stuff about you losing before, is that all true? <laughs> of course it's true. I mean, winning isn't everything in that kind of place. Hey, Lighter! You'd better take this seriously. Don't try to find excuses when you lose. Piper. Load up and pull out. Pass this one. Take this. Stop yelling my name. What should we do now? We, we were told that, that... Don't do anything. Leave the data piles to the sons of Caladon. I'll take responsibility for this. Okay. Okay. Understood, Bellum. Ryder, I came here to face you. Now that we fought, according to League rules, I concede defeat. I just didn't expect that after all these years, I still couldn't beat you or claim my honor. No, you're wrong. You never needed to reclaim any honor in the first place. I didn't mean to forget your name, it's just that everything in the underground fighting scene means nothing to me. What? Hurting an opponent for money, taking a dive for money... <laughs> That life has nothing to do with honor. Only those with no choice step into the ring. You were no different back then. You've got the skills to leave that place behind and become a biker gang's champion. Why leave your heart in that dark, cramped hellhole? Murder, <coughs> you... You mean... Be grateful for the outer ring. It doesn't care about your past or where you come from. If you've got the skills, you rewrite your fate. 
If you just want to test your mettle against me, say the word. I'm down any time. After all, I've got a rifle that I've been itching to challenge for a while now. I... I will... Lighter. Um... Thank you. No problem, Bal... 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 Bellum. Uh, Lighter! You never intended on remembering my name. You're just messing with me again. Wait, aside from the name thing, I meant everything I said. That doesn't make me feel any better. The place that refits old vehicle parts is just past the hollow entrance. We'll be there soon. Oh, actually, I've got a question. I heard from Wise that the factory in the hollow sells parts after they've been sorted. If that's the case, why not just buy them outside the hollow? It's simple, really. With so many bikers in the old oil field, the leftover parts that do end up reaching the market are the ones that no one wants. Exactly. It's like if you want... Top quality fresh fish. Someone has to set out to sea early in the morning and use an airship to get the ingredients back to the kitchen. It's just fish. Is all that really necessary? Proxy, it's way easier for us to come into the hollow to buy stuff compared to the hassle city folks go through just to have a meal.
find dumb luck. Too, huh? Unfortunately, we're out of stock until the Torrid Inferno is over. Say what? What the heck's going on? Some youngsters came by this morning and bought up all of my stock. Huh? I warned them that buying up everything would make things difficult for my other customers. But the Thyron girl leading them seemed awful fiery and uh, they paid well above market price. Oh. She said she's from the Sons of Caledon and that they were prepping for the big challenge since they finally got a spot to compete. Wait, do we have any Thyrens? Grassy, Woody, and Bricky aren't girls, right? Oh, Bernice, the heart of the matter is that someone impersonated us and bought everything here. Wait, what did you say? Ugh. We're the real sons of Caledon. We have no idea who those other people are. <sighs> Damn. Not only did they keep us from getting parts, they also tarnished our reputation. Hmm. They played their hand well. Well, actually, the whole thing just feels wrong to me. If you can persuade her to change her mind, I won't object. Just uh, don't mention it was me who told you. Where did those people go, old man? Oh, after they bought everything here, they headed straight to the abandoned vehicle graveyard deeper in the hollow when they heard there were more parts there. Looks like we've still got a chance to catch them. Mm-hmm. Let's get going, Proxy! I need to go to the vehicle graveyard to get my bike back. Can we make it in time? Don't worry. I'm the last Piper to bring the vehicles here. This way. There's a special fissure nearby. <laughs> we'll be able to rendezvous with her soon. Oh, Proxy! I knew we could count on you! The is near the highway. We're almost there. Master, please be aware. Explosive items detected in the vicinity. Oh, hey, Stephen. Watch me burn him to the ground. Warning. Grenades have activated the discharge mode. Who's that? What terrible taste. Someone who uses Golden Banjo in this dress as their internaut username has no right to question my taste. Shut up! 
Nice work, Bernice. The flames follow my flow. Incoming! Time to shine! Signals detected in the area ahead. Great. Piper's already here. I can really get my butt. Heeding the proxy's call. Little old me wouldn't keep you waiting for a minute longer. Your rides are here for you. Let's get a rolling. Thanks, little old you. Guys, let's ride. Slow down, Bernice. You're going too fast. It's time to find out who's the fastest. We might be able to get ahead of them. Ooh-wee! You youngin' sure got some fire in your belly. Proxy, get on! Let's head out! Thinking, since we have the upper hand, we might as well call it a day. But seeing you like this really brings out my predatory instincts. will be returned, and I'll give up the parts from the vehicle graveyard. So let's just pretend none of this ever happened. Huh. Pretend none of this ever happened? What? Feeling hard done by? After I bought the parts, no one else should have come by. This shouldn't affect the Sons of Caledon's reputation. Besides, 
If my employer finds out I failed, it won't do me any good either. So I'll say the job's done. You benefit from this too. Pretend none of this ever happened? Come on, what's your deal? What more do you want? Oh, but, but we were having so much fun just now. Uh, what? Kitty, you're really good. I've never seen a Thyrin as skilled and cute as you before. Cute? Wait, what are you talking about? I mean it, and it looks like the legends are true. Cat Thyrins aren't loyal to their masters. Huh. Well, I'm just a mercenary working to get paid. And about my employer, hmm. Honestly, I'm not a big fan of him. But I can't reveal his identity. I don't want to cause trouble for myself, so don't even go there. That's okay. We won't ask. Hey, Bernice! This isn't your decision to make! <laughs> Leave her be, Lucy. Once Bernice has her mind made up, nothing's gonna change it. Kitty, if you don't like your current employer, why not join the Sons of Calidon? Huh? <laughs> Aren't you afraid I'll betray you? No one's safe from the sharp claws of a cat firing. Don't worry, I've heard that Kitty's choose to partner up with only the strongest. The Sons of Calidon can definitely live up to that. We'll see. Once you've actually proven you're the strongest, at least. And stop calling me Kitty. I do have a name. It's Polkra. Okay, Polkra. Let's play again next time. With a playmate who doesn't know their own strength? I think I'll pass. But... I am partial to warm places. Roxy, sorry to call you here so late. I'll cut to the chase. I have an extra commission for you, and I need you to keep it secret. Why keep it from the others? We're in a crucial stage of our preparation for the race, and I don't want this throwing anyone off their game. You must have noticed. Lately, every time we go into the hollows, we're met with one obstacle after another. Ugh, it's clear someone has it out for us. I did a background check on Bellum and Polkra. There's no public info linking them to any biker gang, but I bet they've got something to do with the Vanquishers. You don't suspect any of the other biker gangs? 
The Torrid Inferno is a head-to-head -head duel between us and the Vanquishers. Since one team will end up with the next Overlord, it's best not to cause trouble right now. Also, knowing Lucius, there's no way he's not involved. <sighs> but we don't have solid proof, so we can't do anything about it. Proxy, I expected some tricks from our rivals, but something's off. Their intel is always right on the money. If they didn't know about our plans ahead of time, how could they keep getting the jump on us? Someone in town must be feeding intel to the Vanquishers. Do you have any suspects in mind? Not yet. Blazewood mostly backs us to win, so I need to investigate. I'll look into it. I might need your help further down the line, though. Don't worry. Faithen will take the commission. Thanks. Oh, and just a reminder, don't tell the others. Especially Bernice and Caesar. Bernice can't keep a secret. And as for Caesar, well, never mind. You really care about Caesar, don't you? N no way! Hm. I have intel Caesar doesn't know, which means I have the upper hand. That's all. Anyway, I'll contact you once I get a breakthrough. Wait for my word. Bye.
Proxy, it's you. Are you looking for Lucy? Yes. I wanted to go over the details of the Tour de Inferno with Lucy. Ah, Proxy. You really know how to keep your mouth shut. That's good to know. I've said it before. If you can't keep a secret and are slow to react, you're not cut out to be a proxy. Piper, were you testing me just now? Sorry, sorry. But what comes next is crucial, and it's messier than we thought. Proxy, the suspicious individual was discovered by Piper. She'll fill you in on the details. Here's the deal. Ever since we've set up camp here, I've noticed something odd. Every time Blazewood ships out their handicrafts, Casa always leaves town for two or three hours at night, carrying hollow gear with her. Since Lucy told me there might be a mole, one night I pretended I couldn't sleep and talked to Casa when she was about to leave. She said she was out for a stroll because she also couldn't sleep, and then she just went back inside as if everything was normal. But an hour later, she snuck out of Blazewood again. Looks like Casa could very well be the informant. Ugh, this is terrible news! Casa's relationship with the Sons of Caledon goes back longer than I've been around. We set up camp here because of that trust. And to Caesar, Casa has always been like a big sister. Someone she can rely on. If she really has backstabbed us. The long-standing bond between Blazewood and the Sons of Calidon would be ruined. So, we have to investigate this discreetly. If we're right about this, we need to solve it without Caesar knowing. This is a tough situation. Like speeding downhill heading for a turn, but your brakes are out. But dwelling on the worst case scenario won't help. We have to roll with the punches, cause that's how the Sons of Caledon do. Piper's right! Once a wild boar charges, there's no backing down! Proxy, I heard there's another shipment going out in a few days. Casa should follow her usual routine. We'll follow her at night and see what she's up to. Alias, should I use this time? <laughs> I've been waiting for you. All right, we're in the hollow. How are things with Bernice and Caesar? I checked. Caesar's already asleep. That girl's got a routine like clockwork. And Bernice is all taken care of. I sparred with her the entire day to wear her out. Looks like tonight, the ethereals in the hollow won't taste my perfect one-hit KO. They got off lucky. Quit whining, Lighter. If you'd hit in the nitro fuel better, we wouldn't be in this mess. All right, let's get moving. Only the three of us and the proxy can handle this now.
Agreed. Morse? You were supposed to come alone. What are you talking about? Hand over the goods like you promised. <laughs> if you want the goods, you're gonna have to pay up. Mm. Or... I'll just take it from the Sons of Caledon. Wait, what? <laughs> you're mine now. And my prey never escapes. Oh yeah? Bring it on! Morse Cossack, let's settle this right now! The Caesar trusted you! What are you doing running with them? Hang on, Lucy, I can explain. You guys met up here in secret. What else is there to explain? What did they hook you up with? It's not like that. 
It's just that the town is in dire need of necessities. Ever since the gas station ran out of gas, we've been running low on many resources. Uh, what? You never mentioned any of this before. What <laughs> <Once and> more? <laughs> Supplies will get corrupted if left in the hollow. Casa. Mm -hmm. Take them with you. Uh. Huh? Overlord Pompey? been a while, Caesar of the Sons of Caledon. To think that little sprout by Big Daddy's side would dare bring her underlings to challenge me. Overlord Pompey, while the Sons of Caledon still recognize you as the leader of the Motor League, you'd better explain why you're here. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That will be addressed soon enough. But first, there's a more pressing matter. Caesar, these goods are what the Vanquishers promised to deliver to Blazewood. Are you deciding to let the mayor take them? Don't push your luck. Lucy, wait. I heard you arguing with Casa earlier. I checked these boxes. They really are food and medicine. They weren't lying. No matter where they came from. These are things the town needs. But... Casa... If you're in a bad spot... Why didn't you ask us for help? We've known each other for years. Caesar, I was actually planning to ask you for help. But then you came in all excited, telling me you qualified for the Tour d'Inferno and asked if you could stay in Blazewood for a while. The Sons of Caledon have helped Blazewood so much over the years. At a crucial time like this, we have no way to repay you. So how could we make you worry about this for us too? Repay? Selling us out to the Vanquishers is your idea of repaying us? Selling you out? Wait, Lucy, I've never betrayed you. I just made a deal with the Vanquishers. We trade the handicrafts we make for supplies. She's telling the truth. Although you have the favor of Blazewood, as the Overlord, I couldn't turn a blind eye to the needs of the residents. So I presented them with an opportunity. When Casa suggested moving the trade to the Hollow to avoid any misunderstandings, I agreed. After all, we can't disrupt the peace among League members. So you're saying the leak about our whereabouts has nothing to do with you? Standing your ground is a good trait, but not knowing when to back down is just disrespectful. I'm here to resolve this matter. Today I found this in the handicrafts Blazewood delivered. Is that... a listening device? Moors, this vial should have contained heavy oil, the lifeblood of the old oil field. So why is this here? <sighs> also, the supplies delivered to Blazewood of late seem to be less than what was agreed upon. Do you know anything about this? Boss, Pompey, I... I... Moors! I didn't bring you along for the Tour d'Inferno just for you to play dirty tricks. If we, as the League Overlords, are not just, then who would want to remain part of the League? And who would protect the old oil field? I'm so sorry. I messed up. I wasn't thinking straight. It's all my fault. I'll take the punishment. You're willing to take your punishment. Do you think you alone can bear the responsibility for the damage that you've caused? Sons of Caledon, Casa, 
Moore's is my subordinate. I failed to manage him properly. I won't shift the blame onto him. As the current overlord, I'll take responsibility for this and provide compensation. <laughs> nice speech. Now how do you plan to fix this? Recently, I negotiated and reached cooperation agreements with several areas neighboring the old oil field. According to the agreement, the old oil field's damaged oil pipelines can be rebuilt through other regions, as long as we provide some of the oil to them. Wait, does that mean our town's oil supply is saved? That's right. Within three months, the supply should be restored. Also, several regions have agreed to share the roads, opening up at least five new freight routes for the old oil field. Sons of Caledon, in the next six months, I plan to have you manage three of these routes. I take it you won't refuse. You mean you're just gonna hand them over on a silver platter? I heard you've been drawing bad routes lately. Though it's just a coincidence, it's time to compensate you. And though the new routes are lucrative, they also traverse treacherous areas and require experienced riders. I have a condition, though. You need to help the less fortunate residents in these three regions for free during this period. And any teams using the routes in the future must do the same. How does that sound? Hey, Lucy. How are the terms? Are they really as good as he says? If it's true, it does solve our long-standing issues with Blazewood. Plus, with expanded routes, the other biker gangs would see a significant income boost. Hmm, I see. Hey, oh man! Your terms are certainly interesting, but it looks like you're making assumptions. The title of Overlord and who gets to allocate the routes hasn't been decided yet. If I become Overlord? I'll be fairer than you. <laughs> you can certainly talk the talk. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> All right, I agree. Caesar, here's a letter of commitment I wrote myself. The root allocations will be officially announced soon. See you at the Tour Inferno. Bugs the handicraft sent to Blazewood for processing and was listening in on our conversations. Yes, and once the goods were processed and shipped out, they could discreetly retrieve the listening device. It's a flawless plan. If that's the case, why did the Overlord reveal this? At that point, we hadn't even discovered the listening device. Even if we hadn't found the listening device, once we cleared things up with Casa, we would have eventually started to suspect the handicrafts. That's right. If we found the bugs ourselves, things would have gotten out of hand. Is there a difference? Oh, Bernice, always so optimistic. The Overlord stepping up shows some sincerity, at least. If we had confronted him, even if it was all Moores is doing, he wouldn't have accepted his terms, right? Mishandling this could have shaken the foundations of the Motor League jeopardizing the safety of the old oil field. It would have caused that much trouble? Yes. We've been able to live relatively peacefully, thanks to the League ensuring the security of our oil resources. You have to understand, our oil isn't just coveted by other regions in the Outer Ring. Big city companies see it as the only thing stopping them from expanding into the Outer Ring. If something happens to the oil, the biker gangs might have a chance to move to other areas. But everyone else won't be so lucky. Especially Blazewood. The residents are mainly the elderly or children, and their ether aptitude is weak. Oh, Proxy! There you are! Sorry to bother you, but can we talk? Proxy, I want to discuss Caesar. Ever since we met with the Overlord, she's been acting weird. She's usually straightforward and energetic. But lately, she's just been sitting on her own, 
lost in thought. She's even eating less than usual. Caesar's worried about something? It's strange, right? Lighter offered to train for the Turd Inferno with her, and she said she'd think about it. I think it's related to what happened that day. But if I ask her, she won't tell me the truth. <clears throat> uh, just so you know, I don't really care what's wrong with her, but she's still the leader of the Sons of Caledon, and I can't let her affect the others. Proxy, can you come up with something? Lucy, how about I take Caesar out to take her mind off things? I'm planning to head back to New Eridu tomorrow to copy some offline data. It might be a good opportunity. That's a good idea. And Caesar hasn't been to New Eridu much. You can show her around. All right, I'll handle Caesar. Tomorrow, have her take you to New Eridu on her bike. I'll leave the rest to you. So this is where the famous Faithin lives and runs a video store. <laughs> that reminds me. Sometimes Lucy comes all the way to New Eridu just to see movies that feature her favorite stars. Caesar, you haven't been to New Eridu much, have you? When we do get business in the city, we get hold of temporary entry permits. But I rarely make the trip. I was born and raised in the Outer Ring. I still prefer a place that gives you the freedom to roam. How about we explore the city today? I'll be your tour guide. We have some time while the data copies, and there's nothing else to do while we wait. All right, you're the boss.
We've seen the movie and had our drinks. Where should we go next? We've got some time to spare. How about we walk around nearby? There's lots of interesting shops in Lumina Square. You might see something you like. Okay, let's go. Everyone, watch out! Stay away from that fugitive! Uh-oh. That guy has a dangerous look in his eyes. Those guys chasing him don't stand a chance. Take care of yourself, Wise. I'll be right back. Hello, Wise? Caesar, where are you? Are you okay? Don't worry, don't worry, I'm fine. I already caught the guy. Don't forget I'm even stronger than lighter. And besides, you weren't that concerned about me when I was dealing with ethereals before. Humans are sometimes more dangerous than ethereals. Wow, that's so old school. You sound just like Big Daddy. So, are you still nearby? I got totally turned around chasing him through the alleys. So, I am a little lost right now. Give me a minute and I'll come to you. Hmm? Hey, Wise, can you hear me?
The data should have finished copying by now. And it's getting dark. Let's head back to the Outer Ring. Thanks for showing me around today. Seems like everywhere in New Eridu is just as busy as the old oil field's biggest market. Badger's Respite. So many strange and wonderful things. No wonder a lot of people from the Outer Ring want to live here. Haven't you ever thought about it, Caesar? With your skills, you could apply for citizenship. Me? Uh, never thought about it. Even now, being here in the city, I still feel like I belong in the Outer Ring. Why, it really is you. Long time no see. I saw the note on your door saying you'd be away for a while, but I didn't expect it to be this long. Chop told me you saw you were back, so I came over to check. How are you guys? We're doing good. Thanks, Enzo. Just visiting friends for a few days. I happen to be one of those friends. We'll take good care of Bell and Wise. <laughs> With such a friendly host, we neighbors can rest easy. I'll leave you to it. If you need anything, just drop by my store. Is that guy your neighbor, Proxy? You seem close. I always heard people in the city aren't as close to one another. But from what I've seen today, people seem pretty friendly here too. You asked if I ever thought about living in the city. I guess with so many close friends in the Outer Ring, I've just never thought about leaving. So, if I want to really protect them, I can't do that. Are you talking about becoming the Overlord? Yeah, Proxy. I've been thinking a lot these past few days. Growing up with the stories of the Torrid Inferno, I always wanted to become the Overlord to prove I was the strongest. But being the Overlord is more than just being the strongest. Even though Pompey's men caused trouble, he stepped in and resolved the situation. He even took care of the problems in Blazewood and with the Sons of Caledon. I only just found out the reason the Overlord hadn't been seen for the past six months is because he had been working on negotiations with the other regions. I would have never thought of doing that. I didn't even know it was an option. When he laid out the terms, Lucy immediately saw the benefits of the new routes for the old oil field. But I only understood after she told me. Casa has been working tirelessly for the town, bearing the brunt of all the pressure. Compared to them, I still have a long way to go. Don't say that, Caesar. You have your own strengths, too. When you found those goods in the hollow, you didn't get angry. You let Casa take them out first. At the time, we all thought Casa had betrayed us, but you still thought of the town's residents first, worrying the items would be corrupted in the hollow. <laughs> I think anyone else would do the same, right? Making sure everyone has enough to eat is more important than my pride or my feelings. But hearing you say that makes me feel a lot better. I might not be the smartest, but like a wild boar, once I set my sights on a target, I won't let up until I chase them down. Besides, I've got a great group of friends supporting me. Now it's time to focus on Tor Inferno. Pompey is a great opponent. This time, we'll find out once and for all who's the best. Boss, here's the new route distribution sheet. 
The newly expanded freight routes have been assigned to the Sons of Caledon as per your instructions. Yes, put it there. Boss, you've worked so hard for these new routes. Are you really going to just hand them over? If it weren't for Moore stealing the intelligence, I wouldn't have had to go through all this trouble. By the way, Moore's insists he acted alone. What do you think? Well, boss, you know Moore's was also thinking of our best interests. <laughs> You're giving me the answer to a question I never asked. But you don't seem too surprised by all this. Wanting to win isn't a bad thing. But since I'm the reigning overlord, we have to act with integrity. The Motor League's stability ensures the safety of the oil wells. If there's infighting, someone's going to get taken advantage of. By the way, I heard that you've had a lot of dealings with companies in the city lately. Uh, that is absolutely untrue. It's just that we had some issues with the protective gear we arranged for the oil refinery. I had to find a way to handle it. I hope so. Lucius, you're smart and ambitious, but always eager for immediate results. Don't let your cleverness backfire. Yes, boss. <coughs> these documents never end. I've been feeling exhausted these days. Am I getting too old for this? Not at all, boss. You've been talking about the Tour d'Inferno a lot lately. You're clearly raring to go. <laughs> well said. Caesar may have some potential, but she's not ready to replace me yet. But boss, please don't overwork yourself for the next few days. After all, for this grand event, you need to be in peak condition. Alias, should I? Ooh, oh, so sleepy. Remember to buckle up. Simple. 
table. Charge into the hollow, reach cinder-like, and use the spark stone to blow up those pesky aether crystals. Whoever completes the ritual first will be crowned Overlord! Overlord! The finals have been a long time coming. This showdown's gonna be a blast. <laughs> You're quite confident, little girl. Do your best, and try not to bore me. The Torg Inferno is officially on! The Vanquishers and the Sons of Caladon are neck and neck as they pass the fork. Can we expect an epic showdown in the Hollow? Be careful, everyone. We're about to enter the Hollow. Cinder Grow Lake, here we come! on the road ahead. <laughs> Piece of cake! Warning. Dangerous buildings above the road Rush ahead. Rush past them! You okay? Uh, not at all! My hair is full of steam! <laughs> That's what you get for being so slow! There are more and more ether crystals around. Ether concentration levels are up too. Everybody be careful. Huh. There's a huge building over there. Probably an oil refinery, right? Big Daddy told me this place used to be incredible. Watch where you're going! Are you okay? Dang, that was quite an impact. Is your Bang Boo all right? I'm fine. What about the others? I don't know. Lucy and Lighter are missing. It's just you and me. When the boulder fell, the ground gave way and collapsed, forming a massive hole. And when I woke up, we were here. Master. Due to the spatial distortion caused by the severe tremors, you have deviated from the planned route, recalculating your position. Additionally, before the rockfall, 
A significant release of energy was detected coming from both sides of the road. Please proceed with caution. A significant release of energy? You mean an explosion? There were old oil facilities on that path. Did the explosion come from there? <laughs> What's this? When we fell in here, I got covered in this glittery dust. Dust? Now that you mention it, Eos is covered in it too. Hmm? Wait a minute. Isn't this stuff the ether powder left behind after a pure ether explosive goes off? What did you say, Wise? But the Outer Ring doesn't have advanced ether technology, and the city wouldn't sell such dangerous tech to the Outer Ring. So how did it get here? Since we found this stuff, it wasn't an accident. We were sabotaged. What? Who did this? Could it be... the Vanquishers, could it? But when we were at the starting line, Pompey told me to give him my all and give him a proper challenge. He seemed eager to compete. How could he stoop so low? Caesar, although we can't jump to conclusions, with an incident as serious as this, there's no way today's race can continue as planned. The drone should have gotten it all on camera. Bernice is watching the race. We have to tell her the truth and get her to call it off. Understood, second assistant. Connecting you now. Oh, hey, Proxy, it's you. What are you calling me for? Everything looks to be going smoothly in the Hollow, and we haven't encountered any battles so far. Huh? Bernice, didn't you see what just happened? What? Did something happen? Why, something's wrong. Fairy says the footage being broadcast has been tampered with. It's not just ours. Even the footage of the Overlord is fake. The footage from both sides has been swapped out. I don't think this is just about stopping us from winning the Tour de Inferno. Yeah, their actions suggest they aren't worried about getting exposed later. And there's ether explosives appearing where they shouldn't be in the outer ring. Could they be targeting Cinder Lake? Are you saying Cinder Lake might be in danger? Yes, I think Wise's guess makes sense. Caesar, you're the leader of the Sons of Caledon and our client. So what's the plan? We can try to get out of the Hollow right now and tell everyone about what happened. Or... You're stating the obvious, Proxy. We're heading to Cinder Lake. We can't just sit back and watch. As long as we can protect Cinder Lake, we'll figure the rest out. Got it. Faithen will respect and follow your decision. Uh, wait. What are you all talking about? It sounds like something crazy happened, but it doesn't make any sense. Don't worry, Bernice. I'll explain everything to you later. Wise, Caesar, you two should get going. You've got to regroup with Lighter and Lucy. Let's go, Proxy. We don't have much time. Biosignals detected in the area ahead. Ugh, there's no end to these things. That was Lucy's voice. Let's hurry. Don't worry, we're fine. But the collapse just now was not normal. Seems like it was caused by ether explosives. 
That's the conclusion we came to, too. Looks like someone is trying to harm Cinder Lake. We have to get there fast. Wait! If you're going to Cinder Lake, you need a bike! Note. I've already detected the coordinates of three motorbikes. <laughs> That's great news! Proxy, take us there now! holding a pair of binoculars. He seemed to be looking at something at the foot of the mountain. It's where the explosion happened. Moors, what's your status? Have you seen the Sons of Caledon? Where have they gone to? Reporting in, boss. I've been monitoring their route as instructed. But I still haven't seen any sign of them yet. Still haven't seen them? Those young'uns know how to handle themselves. Now that they're facing some real trouble, they can't take it. <laughs> uh, boss? You okay? Ha! <laughs> Mors, of course the Overlord is fine. Didn't you see him cut down those ethereals just now with a single slash? Lucius, enough trying to suck up to me. After all these years with me, you still haven't gotten over those bad habits of yours. Turning tail and running at the first sign of danger, and underestimating your enemies when victory's within reach. As a biker and second-in-command of the Vanquishers, you aren't fit to lead with that attitude. Boss, I get what you're saying. I've always been slow to learn. If it wasn't for you, I would never have even seen the shadow of Cinder Lake. Enough. In the past, you would have fled at the mention of the Tour de Inferno. But now you've insisted on coming along. That counts as progress. Moors, keep an eye on the Sons of Caledon. We aren't far from Cinder Lake. Not good. The Vanquishers are way ahead of us. But by the sounds of it, Pompey knew nothing about the explosion. Is it just me, or does something feel off about Moors? The explosion at the foot of the mountain just now caused a huge landslide. You can see the rising smoke and dust from here, even without binoculars. Roxy, you're onto something. Seeing something like that would usually cause alarm. Even if Moors was sent to spy on us. It's still weird that he didn't even mention this to the Overlord. Hey, Caesar, pipe down! Huh? Who's there? Moors, time to surrender. Not gonna happen!
escape through the fissure. Morph must have had something to do with the explosion back there. I've got a bad feeling about this. Now is not the time for this. Focus on dealing with the ethereals in front of us. The sons of Caledon talked a big game about having a showdown, but this has been disappointingly dull. Boss, you might have a soft spot for that Caesar, but it's their own fault for being so useless. <laughs> but dull can be a good thing. At least we won't have to worry about Cinder Lake for a few years. What's with all these ether crystals coming out of nowhere? The ether aggregation catalyst can accelerate the crystallization of free floating ether particles. This is tech developed by City Enterprises to increase ether production, and it works wonders in the unique environment of Cinder Lake. Lucius, do you mean you? That's right, Pompey. I've replaced your spark stone. Cinder Lake will be completely extinguished soon. Oh, and one more thing I almost forgot to mention. When using this catalyst, the nearby ether concentration will skyrocket. Especially for those with a weak aptitude for ether, it will have serious consequences. <coughs> Lucius, how dare you! You won't get away with this! <coughs> how dare you give me another scar! You monster! Despite being so corrupted, you still have this much strength! To think I ever had such high hopes for you. I was blind! Do you understand the impact of colluding with the city's ether companies? What it'll do to this place? <laughs> Did you really think we all shared your old-fashioned ideals of freedom and morality, boss? The weak and the worthless have no place in this age. With the power of ether, I will establish a new order in this leaderless outer ring. A kingdom completely under my control! What is it? Boss, we found the Sons of Caledon. They're about to reach Cinder Lake. What? All those explosives didn't take them out? <sighs> we have to retreat for now. Seeing Cinder Lake snuffed out would have been a 90, but now it's down to a 60. Sorry, boss. Time to say goodbye. At least you'll be out of your misery. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just remembered. Weren't you disappointed you couldn't face the Sons of Caledon in a final showdown? Warning. A significant increase in ether concentration near Cinderglow Lake has been detected. What? What's going on? There aren't any cameras near Cinder Lake, so we can't be sure. But it's definitely not a good sign. Damn! Does that mean we're too late? No matter what, Lucy. We have to get there as fast as we can. Proxy? Where are our bikes? The fisher took them to a place not too far away. Come with me. Barry, how is the situation at Cinder Lake looking? Rising ether concentration levels detected. I have also detected that Cinder Lake's heat signature is shrinking. I knew it! Cinder Lake is in trouble! We're almost there. Our rides are up ahead. Bang on! Load up and pull out! Come on, face me head on! Oh, Not one step further! <laughs>
We're almost there. Cinder Lake is just ahead. Caesar, that's... Old man! Hang in there! <laughs> The corruption is too severe. Caesar! Something's wrong with Cinder Lake! There are ether crystals everywhere! What on earth happened here? It's Lucius. He betrayed me. We'll get you out now! We can deal with the rest There's later. no time! Caesar, listen. You... you must protect... Cinder Lake. <laughs> Nice one! 
I'm here. I'm fine. <sighs> we finally did it. But Cinder Lake, in a few minutes it'll be completely extinguished. How ironic. Even with the Sparkstone, it's too far away. There's nothing we can do. Without oil, what does Lucius plan to do with the old oil field? Unless a miracle happens. Huh? I'll get the Sparkstone there. Uh, what? Wait. No. Caesar, you can't be. Mean... Right, Lucy. Even without oil, we can still make a living somewhere else. But what about the people who don't have a choice? I'm sorry, but this is what I have to do. Spatial fluctuation nearby. It's like something is coming our way. It's not over yet. Where is it? <laughs> You shouldn't have rushed over here. With everything that's happened in the old oil field, you need to be there to keep things under control. I told you I'm just the acting overlord. That day, even though Pompey threw in the sparkstone that was replaced by Lucius, he was the first one to reach the finish line. The overlord title should be his. Caesar, speaking of Lucius, any news on his whereabouts? Nothing yet. We haven't found his man Mores either. <laughs> that no good snake. We sent Bernice and Piper to cut him off, but he got away. Looking through the stuff he left behind, we found evidence that he was colluding with an Ether Corporation in the city. Combined with Eos's recordings that day, the old oil field bikers are well aware of what he did. Proxy, I didn't get to thank you after leaving the hollow. We saved Cinder Lake thanks to you. Couldn't have done it without you, Caesar. When Cinder Lake was about to go out, I almost gave up hope. All I could do was watch as he rode away, getting further and further from us. Hey, don't get emotional on me. I was saved by the fissure hidden under the vent. Isn't it crazy how that went down? A friend who's an expert on this said that due to the complex air currents around the fissure, ether particles are unable to stabilize 
preventing it from being sealed off. Due to the balance between the natural gas and the ether particles, the fissure won't be moving anywhere. It's probably been there for decades. Diving into the fiery sea, the hero returns valiantly. When the first overlord reached the lake, maybe that's where he jumped in too. <laughs> Who'd have thought the legend of the first overlord was true? Well, this was an unexpected discovery. People back then didn't know about the fissure, and the first overlord probably forgot what happened to him. So that's where the divine intervention part of the legend came from. True, but isn't the existence of a fissure right in the middle of Cinder Lake already pretty divine intervention-y? Do you remember what happened after you fell into the fissure? Parts of it, but it's hazy. I thought I was done for. In the darkness, I thought I would lose consciousness pretty quickly. But I could feel every part of the overwhelming pressure as I passed through the fissure. Then, I saw a light in the darkness and instinctively pulled back on the throttle and sped towards it. Next thing, I came out right on top of you all. It was unbelievable. After you said, we meet again, the next thing out of your mouth was, Lucy, if I die, the Sons of Caledon are yours. She's always had her eye on taking over as the leader of the Sons of Caledon. And in that moment, I suddenly realized that I'd never made that clear before. I thought she'd be relieved. That lunatic jumped up, shouted, I don't want your leftovers, and straight up slapped me in the face. It's your fault for saying that. Lucy was still crying when we left the hollow. Yeah, Lucy was really scared I would die. But now everything's fine. Both me and Cinder Lake. Since you're heading back to the city, let me give you something as a memento. Yeah, <laughs> all of the Sons of Caledon chipped in. It's a shame I didn't have time to help with the weaving. I just drew the design in the middle. It means a lot. I love it. You're always welcome in the Outer Ring, Proxy. May you rise from the ashes.
The sound of Caesar's motorcycle has completely faded. It looks like we're about to leave the Outer Ring. As expected of the new Overlord, so reliable. It's really cool that they escorted us all the way to the edge of the Outer Ring. They even took a bunch of shortcuts that the GPS didn't know. Thinking about how Cinder Lake was almost extinguished, and now we're laughing and driving home? It feels like a dream. What's wrong, Belle? You sound a little emotional. Although we could only prove the fissure in Cinder Lake exists from its effects, apart from Caesar's bold gamble, there really was no other way to save it. But watching Caesar fall, that feeling of helplessness, I never want to go through that again. Just like that time. Belle. Wise. <laughs> no wonder we're family. You must be thinking the same thing I am, right, Wise? This is the edge of the city. Eos and Fairy are here too. It's time. Master. You have deviated from your course, recalculating a new route home. Don't worry, Fairy. We are going the right way. The road we're taking now is the real way home. We're here. Let's go up. Come on, Eos. Don't forget your scarf. No, no. It feels like we haven't been back in a long time, Belle. Fairy, do you know where this is? Search complete. This is the center of the chasm at the edge of New Eridu. The chasm, which preceded New Eridu, was the product of the large uncontrolled hollow disaster in Eridu, often called the Fall of the Old Capital. To deal with the out-of-control Hollow Zero during the Fall of the Old Capital, Eridu's leaders at the time detonated the 14 Shuyu Pillars from the southwest to the northeast. The power of the explosion sparked a strong geological chain reaction, bringing about the formation of the chasm. That's right. There's nothing in the chasm that can be corrupted, so Hollow Zero can't convert more etheric energy to expand, which prevents it from getting out of control. New Eridu could only be built because of it. Without it, if you keep driving from here, you'll end up on the road to the northern side of Eridu, which is really close to the throne quarter. Within ten minutes, you'll come upon a massive statue. That belongs to the White Star Institute. Turning left before the statue takes you to the former main road number seven of the Minerva Quarter. On the left side of the road were all the old civilization antique shops that Wise liked to go to. He was just a kid back then, and always fell for pig antiques. And on the right side of the road were all the dessert shops and snack stores that Belle loved. I couldn't resist Belle's whining and ended up buying more treats than she could ever finish. I couldn't finish them? As soon as any snacks were placed on the table, everyone would grab them up within a minute. Or have you forgotten? How could I forget? So, at the end of main road number seven, after you pass two, no, three security gates, you'll see a beautiful building. Our teacher is right there. She'll be at the entrance with Eos waiting for us. She always liked to stand to the right of the building's plaque. The Helios Academy. That's our real home. It's there now as well, just across the chasm deep inside Hollow Zero, under the rubble of the old capital's ruins. Teacher, we're back. It's been a while this time, and a lot's happened. Master, second assistant, please allow me to express my condolences for the significant individual who has passed away. Should you wish, I can search for her name and accurately determine her location on the memorial monument. Carol. Carol Arna. That name was not found in the database of victims from the fall of the old capital. Only one matching result was found in the related information resulted in the uncontrollable Hollow Zero, leading to the great tragedy of the fall of the city. The main culprit, Senior Research Director Carol Arna of the Helios Academy, 
along with others involved, will forever be etched on the pillar of shame. Speculation. The name provided earlier was incorrect, or the matching information belongs to another person with the same name. No, it's no mistake. The person officially responsible for the fall of the old capital is Carol Arna. She was our teacher. She taught us, raised us. The HDD system and EOS are among her many achievements. She also saved us when the old capital fell. Fairy, didn't you ask us why we wanted to investigate Hollow Zero? This is our reason. We became proxies so we could collect enough observation data to one day head back to where Helios Academy once stood, deep in Hollow Zero. We're confident that if there are clues anywhere, it's got to be there. Belle and I are prepared to swear on our lives that our teacher isn't the one responsible. We have to uncover the truth about the fall of the old capital and clear our teacher's name. She's innocent, because... Warning, an unknown entity has been detected nearby. Huh? Now? Who would come here? <laughs> You're the head of Section 6, Hoshimi Miyabi. That's correct. And you're the leaders of the independent investigation team with the exceptional guide, Bangbo. I did not anticipate being bested by you. We're honored you remember us. But being bested by us, what do you mean? I am training to be the first to reach the Chasm Memorial. I would like to spend some more time with her alone. So you're here to pay your respects to the deceased, too? Yes. My mother. My condolences. I hope you can find peace soon. Thank you. But I don't intend to find peace. Hmm? You don't want to find peace? Indeed. I shall not seek peace until all those responsible for the fall of the old capital are apprehended. them all. None will escape me. <laughs>